Angel Mackey, Genentech. Thanks for spending a few moments uh, today at Power Europe 2015 here in Paris. Um, so tell me, what do you do for Genentech and how did you come about to, uh, to work with the group? Sure, I work in, in G Partnering at Genentech, which is Genentech Partnering. Um, I actually started off my career training as a scientist with the goal of going in the bio, into the biotech industry. And then somewhere along the way, I got excited about the business of biotechnology and actually transitioned into BD right out of my postdoc. So I, first I worked at an antibody platform company called Metarex. Worked there for several years uh, until we got bought by Bristol-Myers Squibb. Worked there for a couple years and then I was actually invited to interview at Genentech. I'd always admired Genentech for its cutting edge science and technology, so I jumped at the opportunity and, and moved over and the rest is history. Oh, great. So what, tell, tell us a little bit more about GRED and how it, and it interacts with the uh, overall partnering group. Sure. So GRED is Genentech Research and Early Development. It uh, focuses on discovery through phase two and Genentech Partnering is actually part of GRED and we're the business development and alliance management group that works closely with GRED. And we feed into one global late stage development group, which is uh, overseen by Roche. And to that degree, maybe you can describe a little bit about what your partnering strategy is. Sure. Um, our strategy is to find the best science anywhere in the world, whether it be a technology, which is my area of focus, or a therapeutic program. And the goal is to find uh, the best science to help us develop uh, first in class medicines or best in class medicines. And uh, because we focus on discovery through phase two, we tend to partner really early as well. So 90% of our product deals are preclinical. And so you've recently done some interesting deals in the whole, whole genome sequencing space. Sure. Yeah. So why don't you explain a little bit about that and, and why they're important to you. Sure. So recently, uh, Genentech Partnering uh, entered into a deal with Human Longevity, or, or HLI, and 23andMe. Um, the reason we entered into both of those deals in such a short time frame is, is for a couple reasons. One is that the cost of whole genome sequencing has come down quite a bit. It's not quite at the $1,000 per genome, which is widely touted in the press, but it's getting pretty close. So the cost of, of sequencing has come down, the computing power um, has improved, and has, the price of that has also come down. Also, there's some really interesting cohorts available. So with 23andMe, they had uh, put together a cohort of 11,000 subjects that have Parkinson's disease. They've been genotyped and phenotyped, and they did that with the help of the Michael J. Uh, J. Fox Foundation. And so that group was, was available to, to study further. And so we partnered with 23andMe to do whole genome sequencing on a subset of that group and to look for uh, interesting genes associated with Parkinson's disease. The HLI deal uh, was a different deal for Genentech. There we're going to be doing whole genome sequencing of Genentech samples. Again, the idea is to look for novel genes, but associated with a, a bunch of different diseases, not just Parkinson's. Um, and genes that could be new biomarkers or new therapeutic targets, ultimately with the goal of helping us either improve the PTS of our clinical trials or to help us develop new medicines. So I understand that you led the negotiations for those deals. And then, so how did that come about? Um, I did lead the negotiations for both of those deals, but uh, I don't want to take all the credit. <laughs> there was a big deal team both at Genentech and at HLI and 23andMe, plus big technical uh, teams supporting us. So it's definitely not just one BD person on each side to, to get these deals done. Um, and I believe both the deals came about because our companies had relationships already at the, at the senior scientists and executive levels. And so I think that actually underscores the importance of relationships. It's not. Um, not all um, transactions come about from partnering meetings, certainly that, that happens uh, quite a bit, but sometimes it's just relationships between people that have been in the industry for a while. Yeah. So what other technology deals have you done recently that of um, note? So aside from the two human genetics deals, um, I had, have done recently a lot of deals focusing on, on accessing novel chemical matter. So the chemicals or the, the platforms that we use to actually find the drugs against our targets of interest. Um, one of the deals that I did recently was with uh, op uh, Open Monoclonal Technology, or OMT, and that was to get access to their OmniRat platform. This is a rat platform that uh, makes fully human antibodies, and so that's the, the first transgenic animal platform that Genentech has in-house to do human antibody discovery. So that was a big deal. It's, it's being used quite broadly within Genentech. Um, another one was uh, the Ensemble collaboration, and that was sort of our first foray into macrocycle drug discovery. And so there, Genentech's contributing the targets and Ensemble is, looking, uh, is screening their macrocycle library against our targets of interest. So kind of more small molecule and, and antibodies. Nice well. diversity. Yeah. That's really exciting. Um, Angel, thanks for taking some time 
fill us in on what some of the things you've been doing at Genentech, and best of luck. Yeah, thank you, and you're welcome, Constantine.